We all like photographing wildlife, especially birds, on a beautiful sunny day. A couple of clouds in the sky, but the sun shining down on the birds, the colours are so vibrant. But what happens on a cloudy day when the colours aren't vibrant at all? They're very flat. On a beautiful sunny day, this is the beautiful colours that we can get. On a dull day, these wood swallows here, they're fairly bland. The sun's not out, they're in the shade, they don't have too much impact. Instead of pushing the colours, trying to get some vibrancy, trying to get some light, when there's no light there, what about turning these same photos into a black and white image? A grayscale, like this image here, it has so much more impact. Well, I'm going to show you how to do this quite easily in Adobe Lightroom because I've learned that sometimes black and white grayscale is the only way to go when the colors are flat. Let's hop into Lightroom and I'll show you how easily it is to convert a dull, boring photo into a very impressive black and white image. So these are some of the images we're going to work today. And some of them, we're not going to make them totally black and white. We're just going to remove some of the colors in that image. Sometimes like you just want to take one of the colors out, let's say a green or a blue, just to be left with a bit of color, a bit like two-tone, and it can have a very nice impact on your photo. So we'll start off with the wood swallows here. Very nice, but like I said, it's quite flat. And you can see on the histogram, the image is fairly well exposed. I can push it up a bit, but look, they're in the shade, not much color. Now let's go over here into the presets here. These are presets just from Adobe Lightroom, not presets that I've built or presets that I've bought. These are just stock standard with Adobe Lightroom. And if we run our mouse cursor over these presets, we will see what impact they have on our photo. From there, we can just keep going and touching up. Sometimes it's a one hit wonder. Sometimes it's not. So let's see. Look at this. This is just black and white landscape. Contrast. Look at this black and white punch. It just about gets us there. Let's say, okay, we click on this one. We can just have a little bit of fun with this image. You can see what it's done. It's really pushed the shadows up, or increase the shadows a little bit more. And at Adobe Lightroom, we've got so many tools available. If we go up here to this little spinning wheel here, the mask, I select, select sky. So this is going to select all my background here. I can just increase the exposure of the sky like so. Very nice. I click done and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some texture to the birds, a bit of dehaze, and I can bring the exposure up a little bit more on the birds like that. Look at that. Just a couple of clicks and we have such a nice image. If we go to YY, which is before and after, we will see. Look at this. This is our original image on the left. This is our high contrast image. It looks so much nicer. And printing this image either has a canvas or has a high contrast on matte paper would look so nice. Let's take a look at another image here. This is just a bird flying in the sky. And look, if I come down here again, we have landscape, contrast, punch, but I don't like punch. This one here, look, we have contrast. And if I run through all of them, we have punch, we have low contrast, flat, soft. You have so many presets. If I just come back up here, just to high contrast, this looks really nice. But what I want to do is I want a bit of definition because that's what you're after. You're after a bit of punch in your photo because it's a nice blue sky, but after a while, blue skies get a bit boring. We can increase the exposure just a little bit like that. And this looks quite nice. Again, if I want to adjust the background, all I do is select the sky. Now I've already got a mask for the sky here and I can just increase it a little bit like so. Or I can go the other way and look at that. Now this blends with my background here and you can see it's very hard to define where the image stops and where my background on Lightroom starts. But this gives you a very good framing that printing this on canvas would look so nice. You've just got a gray background. It's not a contrasty, but what we're doing, we're just highlighting the bird. There's nothing about, oh, we're looking at the background. It's bright, it's white. No, it's not. Black and white doesn't have to be black and white. It can be grayscale. You can adjust how much of the white and how much of the black you have. The bird is black and white, very punchy, but look at the background, very soft. Also look very nice. 
And look at this one here. These are plovers in the water. There was just a little bit of sun around. This image looks quite nice in color already, but look what you can do if you're just having a little bit of play with the color mask here. So we're going to reduce the colors in about two thirds of our image. So we go up here to the mask wheel and we select color range. And I'm gonna select right in the greens in the middle here, there. And you can see it's selected nearly a whole image, but the birds aren't selected. We're going to increase the refining area a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down here to saturation and I'm gonna remove the saturation in all the greens. Look at that. We've got nearly black and white, but not what I'm trying to show you here is we don't have to accept all the time what we photograph. We should branch out sometimes, make our images interesting so that people look at our images and go like, oh wow, that's different. This is different as well. It's not grayscale, it's not black and white. He's like turned it into a monotone. He's just selected a couple of colors and you can see just a couple of minutes and we're finished. It's very nice. Put up on social media, people are like, oh, how did you do that? So easy to do in Adobe Lightroom, just a couple of mouse clicks. I love photographing raptors. It's very nice with a beautiful blue sky, but you could also turn this image into a very punchy image in black and white. If we come up here to punch, what I can do down here is I can increase the texture. I can increase the clarity. I really want the bird to have a lot of punch. I can quickly increase the dehaze a little bit. We increase the dehaze. What we're doing is we're darkening the image a bit. I can increase the exposure a bit more. Our background here, I select the color range, click on it. I can increase the exposure my background or decrease it depending on what I want. And that's the key here. It's not what I want, it's what you want in the photo. So I'm showing you how I like the image, but you might process this image totally different. This is the joy of photography. Everyone edits the images differently. I can reduce the exposure a bit, like so, or increase it all the way up, like so. This gives you a very defined image. Very nice has a matte print. And look at this egret photo here. Because it was a dull day, the sun was out, but it was very overcast. We've got a very flat light, and you can see that in this image. The egret looks nice like this, but it could look so much nicer as a black and white. So let's see, what does it look like in landscape? See in landscape, black and white? It just about blends into that background. We don't want that. Let's try high contrast. Wow, look at that. High contrast or punch. Punch here doesn't work because punch here blends our background to the bird, but High contrast here, we've got a separation. And when we're editing photos, always remember, whether it's birds, whether it's animals, whether it's landscape, you need to have separation to draw your viewer's attention to your photo. If there's no separation, if your photo is too cluttered, then it's not gonna have any impact. Here, there is very nice separation between the background and the bird. Maybe I can just increase the exposure just that little bit, like that, that's it. That's all I need to do. It is great as it is there. And you can see how we turn just a normal image like this. We go to YY and look at that. This is our original image on the left. Our edited image on the right looks very nice. So you can see that even photographing birds on a dull day, you can still get very impressive photos just by converting those photos to black and white or grayscale, or just reducing the color, removing some of the color ranges and ending up with a very impressive photo. If this video has been of help to you, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your bird photography, even on a dull day, and I'll see you next time.